Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. Thank you for today's daily bread. We receive all of it, Lord. Your goodness has gone out ahead of us. And we are surely going to see that you have made a way for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now we are still in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Are you getting these things at all? See, the purpose of these teachings is to get you to a place of understanding. Praise God. So, so we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And yesterday we, we, we stopped at verse 7. So let me just read verse 7 again. It says, Bear it all things. Talking about love. Bear it all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endure it all things. Things. Now, you know, King James language. Now, let's read the Amplified Version. It says, Love bears up under everything and ev on love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best. Notice that. Notice. He didn't say love believes the best of everybody or every, 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 of every person. He says he's ever ready to believe. Now, that is the attitude of, of love. Ever ready to believe the best of everybody. What, now, what does that mean? It means it is willing to give anybody or every person a chance. That's what it means. It, it doesn't mean, you know, like some people say, eh, leave me alone. God loves me the way I am. That's the biggest lie that, uh, that, that has ever been told. Who told you God loves you the way you are? No, he doesn't love you the way you are. He welcomes you the way you are. Now, that's the attitude of love. He welcomes you the way you are. And then he begins to walk in you. To make you who you are supposed to be. And let me tell you the truth about God. If you don't conform, then you are showing yourself as a bad material for work. And like Jesus said in the book of Revelation, I will spoil you out, praise God. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So don't, don't believe that lie. That's what I need to explain. I say it is ever ready to believe the best of everybody. So it's willing to give you a chance. Question, are you going to take advantage of that chance given to you? Or are you going to just show that you're a fool? Praise God. All right, then. Now he says, he says, love doesn't... Okay, I love this part. I love this part. It, it's hopes and are faithless. So love will love you till the very end. And that's the truth. He doesn't write you off doesn't matter who you are. He doesn't write you off. And that doesn't mean he will use you just like that. No, he will always give you an opportunity. Praise God. Then he says, he says, its, it's hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. So you see, love doesn't get weak. God's love doesn't get cold. It doesn't. Watch this now. Verse 8. It says, love never fails. Hallelujah never fades out or become obsolete or comes to the end. You know, I used to love that person. If you know what he did to me, you never loved the person in the first place. You were just liking the person. Yeah. See what he says. Say, love never fails, never, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. I know the day I stopped loving that person. No, you were not loving the person. No, see, don't, don't use the word love wrongly. You never loved the person. You didn't. If it ended, then it was never love. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. Now, look at what the King James says here. He says, he says, verse 8, Now, charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. You know, people have used this scripture, this, this statement to say, and eh, that's why sometimes prophecy does not come to pass. That's not the meaning of this scripture. When a prophecy is given, 
If it's from God, it never fails. Instead of failing, it is fulfilled. Now, what Paul meant here by it shall fail is not the prophecy itself that will fail. It's actually saying the prophecy will come to an end. See, what does it mean to come to an end? You are not going to live on based on the prophecy. That prophecy must have a time, a season, where it is known as to be fulfilled. Now the question is, after that prophecy is fulfilled, what next? See, you don't live on it anymore. You move on. Now that's why it says, it says now that's what Amplify says here. It says, as for prophecy, the gift of interpreting divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and come to pass. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and seized. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. That's powerful. All these things we do, see, what's going to happen? Truth is rising up from the midst of it. And is that truth which is love that is going to rule and reign over everything. We are not going to be talking about technicalities. You know, sometimes you hear some pastors preach, they are dealing on technicalities that the scripture did not say this. It actually said, what did the mind of God say? That is love. When you hear some arguments, people argue, I, I, I think I've shared that before. You know, I, I find it so funny that today, believers will be arguing with one another over what is written in the Bible. It's so stupid when I see people doing that. It's so stupid. Why, why do I say stupid? The author is alive. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> you know, you, you, uh, believers coming together, there's a problem. You, you are supposed to end it immediately by saying things like this. You know what? Let's go pray over the scripture and let the Holy Spirit enlighten us. And I believe by the next time we meet, we will have better understanding concerning this. Yes. And then the next time you meet, someone should be able to say, do you know the Holy Spirit spoke to me about that scripture? And this is what he said to me. Now when he speaks like that, what is he actually? He's prophesying. And then we, the other people who he's speaking to, will, will, I mean, it will connect with our hearts. Someone said, oh, that's true. Do you know this thing you're saying? Now I understand it. Three weeks ago, the Lord was talking to me about something like this. Now I understand it. Two years ago, you know, God, oh, oh, I see. What you just said now makes sense. That's how you know someone has heard from God. Someone is not going to hear from God and come around believers who fellowship with the Lord. And he's telling them things that are strange. And he's trying to prove it to them. No, sir. No, if it is from God... God would have prepared the hearts of those who list in us. And that's why you don't argue when you're speaking the word of God. You don't argue it. You don't try to force it. When you're trying to force it, it's either you, you didn't really hear from the Lord or, or the people you're speaking to, they are fully ungodly people. So, so they don't have the capacity to receive the word of God. It have those two things. But when you're talking about talking to people who, who hear the voice of God and you're saying something to them and it's not just forming at all, you give it some time, it doesn't form, most likely that thing is not of God. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because when you speak, there is one who bears witness in our heart and he, he's going to connect and say, remember I was teaching you these things three years ago. Oh, yes, I want, oh, I understand it now. That's how it was. Let's go forward further. In this it says but now it says verse 9 it says for our knowledge is fragmentary incomplete and imperfect and our prophecy our teaching is fragmentary incomplete and imperfect but when the complete and perfect the total comes the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away become antique antiquated void and superseded See, it's going to fade away. When the truth comes, it's going to fade away. That, that's why I said there's no point arguing. Let's wait for the Lord. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. Now, this doesn't mean on that final day when Jesus is going to come or when Jesus is revealed to us. What's saying is when truth comes, what does it mean when truth comes? When one of us comes to that place of truth, who realized there was no point arguing in the first place. Just like we argue today, oh, this church believes this one is this, this church believes this one is this. Those things are, 
are just wasting of time. We just need to connect with truth. And then we will realize. There are certain truths that, you know, some certain things I hold, I, I was holding on to. And when the truth came to me, when, when God spoke to me concerning, I realized, oh, there was no point arguing with this person in the first place. This person had some measure of truth. Even though this is where it ended. Because when, when, when truth comes to you, it will take you, it's not going to take you to side you or it's not going to side the other person. It's just going to take you on that journey of truth itself. And then while you're going on that journey, you'll begin to realize where someone was right and where someone got it wrong. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And verse 11 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and put them aside. For now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim blood reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. But then when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, just like what Paul said in, in Philippians chapter 3, he says, look, I want to know, I want to apprehend that for which I was apprehended. I want to know him the same way he knows me. <laughs> Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Give yourself completely to the Lord and you will see the possibility of him opening himself up to you to know him. You will know him. And, and let me tell you the truth. The knowledge of God brings your understanding to everything. It will make you calm. It will make you relax. You will begin to really understand when he says you, he knows the end from the beginning because you will begin to know the end also from the beginning oh blessed lord jesus watch this now let's let's see how we can finish this on our time praise god verse 13 and so faith hope love abide that is faith conviction and believe respecting man's relation to god and divine totains hope joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation love true ref true affection for god and man growing out of god's love for us and in us say these three say there are these three what are the three faith hope and love he said but the greatest of these is love now what's he saying i'll read it and now abided faith hope love these three but the greatest of these is what charity that's love what does it mean he said there's faith there is hope now why did he say i've told you before what is faith faith is the ability to hear god and respond to him it's as simple as that so when god speaks to you he gives you substance that's why hebrew says it is a substance of things hoped for so when god speaks that becomes your substance of what you are hoping if you're hoping to get a car if you're hoping for whatever whatever enter into a room enter into a thing if you're hope whatever you're hoping for the moment the word of god comes to you, you know the moment god speaks to you you have gotten substance to that hope now that's why i say it is when god speaks to you and you respond to it. That's what faith is. So why did he now say faith, hope, love is greater than faith? You would think faith is the most important thing. But love is greater because faith without the heart of love will end you in destruction. But you see, where love is there, faith will surely come. Why? Because faith rides on love if there's no love and faith it's going to be a bumpy ride praise god i've got to stop here today now we're done with first corinthians chapter 13 and tomorrow we are getting into 
chapter 14. Now, that's another interesting chapter, and it's quite a long one. Praise God. But I trust the Lord to help us. Listen, lift up your hands, and let's just bless the name of the Lord. Father, I bless you for everyone who's watching me right now. Let a miracle happen to happen today for their good. Do something in their lives that they are going to love and they are going to enjoy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.